all about living in Mazatlan, Mexico from Carrie Baker in this video interview with expats in Mexico. Why, why Mexico? Had, had you been there on vacation a lot? No, I hadn't, but uh, like so many expats, you know, people that decide to do it, I was living in Denver. The cost of living is very high here. Um, I love the city, but I was having a hard time getting traction. I started thinking outside the box, and now the way I've set it up, the, the, the months I spend in Mexico, particularly because I go off-season, um, I live for about half what my it costs me to live in Denver. When I'm in Mexico, I can live on the beach there because it's off season um, for about half of what it costs me to live in Denver. And so that kind of subsidizes my time here. When I come back for a couple months, it kind of subsidizes my 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 life here in Denver. When I do come back, so it was to cut costs, have some adventure. Um, I love the language. And then once I started spending time there, I realized how much I love the people. Um, you know, I have a lot of, I have good friends in Denver and, and, and don't tell them, but I prefer my Mexican girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're just, so, they're so warm and gracious. And I've had just incredible luck in making um, some very close Mexican girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's got to be the big surprise and the thing that's been um, what I've enjoyed most about Mexico is, mm -hmm. is like people say, the people. Um, but but to actually have, you know, really good girlfriends there, like I do here in Denver, mm -hmm. has has been just uh, extremely rewarding. I mean, it's just been a real lifesaver because, you know, it just makes a huge difference having native friends in Mexico. But why specifically uh, Mazatlan? Because it's, I, I wanted a coastal city. Um, and because of those two friends that I met here mm -hmm. in Denver. I mean, that was in the first context. If I had met somebody from Yucatan, I guess it's possible, Yucatan, I guess it's possible I'd be there, but that's so much further away. Mm -hmm. um, so it was because that, that, that came together. I managed to meet a couple people. Mm -hmm. and then I got very lucky meeting my business partner. That was the first person I lived with in Mexico. And the cost of living in, in Mazatlan for a coastal city is still, I think, uh, according to Mexicans that I've I, I've talked to that know Mexico, that even by Mexican standards, Mazatlan is still a good deal, you know. For a coastal city. So what was it, uh, what do you love about Mazatlan? Um, well, I love that it's a working town. You know, tourism is not their, their number one um, industry. Tourism is third. They're a big fishing uh, industry there, uh, mainly tuna and shrimp. And I like that it's a working a working town. Um, and it, it, it also has a very, uh, an excellent cultural scene. Um, it, it, they have the Angela Peralta Theater there, an old opera house that is a, their art center. And they have really excellent ballet and opera and theater and concerts. Um, so that's a big draw for me. Um, they even have like two man plays. There's some other art centers there that have two man plays and and some some art, uh, an art an art community, uh, pretty uh, pretty vibrant art community, which I love. It's a it's a good size. It's a big enough city where uh, it's a, a real city and it has the WalMarts and the cost Walmart and a Costco and all that. So it's it's got all your conveniences of your larger Mexican towns. It's not overwhelming like Guadalajara would be or a larger city would be. Um, it's still a good deal. I can still get a really great deal on a on a beachfront condo. Uh, like how like much? There. I'm able to get things between eight hundred and a thousand dollars. Okay, because I go off season. And, and what, so, does that, what does that buy you? A uh, two bedroom oceanfront uh, condo, furnished. So, are you a beach person? Is that a you know do you, you like living on the beach? Uh, well, I don't go out there you know very much, but I like having the view. I mean, mm -hmm. I work out of my house, mm -hmm. and so having you know having the ocean to look at is important to me because mm -hmm. I'm writing. It's a very solitary existence being a writer. 
And so having that movement of the ocean in front of me is really mm-hmm. important, I, you know, it's, and I can do it. I can afford to do it because of the time of year I go there. Right. And, and so you're entering your third year of living in uh, Mazatlan now, right? Well, I, I moved there in August of 2014. So. Yeah, so it'll be uh, three years in August. Um, yeah. And this is, is the, the place you're living in now. Is this your third place? Uh, technically, it's my fourth. Fourth, okay. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a there's a lot of there's a wide variety of housing, you know, both houses and uh, and uh, apartments and condominiums in the uh, Mazatlan area, right? Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of expats choose to live by the golf course up north by the marina, okay. and um, so that's another almost a separate expat community. The mm-hmm. expats that you know oftentimes don't speak Spanish and. You know, they're more. They like gated communities. They tend to, to live in the northern, up in the northern area, around the golf courses. And then the other, the Golden Zone is another popular area, um, and that's where I lived this last year, and will probably live when I go back. Um, is is the other area where all the tourists go, and a lot of expats live in the Golden Zone. And that is what right downtown? No, it's in. It, it's pretty much in between. Uh, El Centro, the historic area, which a lot of my, 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 the couple that I know live down in the historic area. Actually, both of my co- original contacts live in El Centro. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for snowbirds in particular, they like El Centro because of the, because of the um, cultural scene there. Uh-huh. And so you have the historic district of El Centro, which is in the southern tip. And then about midway, you, you drive up the Malacan, and about midway, you'll get to the uh, fork in the road, which is the beginning of, this, uh, of the golden zone. Mm-hmm. And then you have a lot of apartments and condos or hotels there, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of expats either live or stay there, have places there. And if you continue on north, then you get to, you, you get to the, the golf courses and the houses and the gated communities, um, and then the marina, is the furthest north, and I, she lives on the beach, but near the marina. So I know the marina area real well. And then if you continue mm-hmm. up, um, yeah, can, can continue up from the marina and keep going north, there are a lot of um, a lot of expat properties, pueblos benitos, which I think are, are is a chain. A lot of condominium complexes along the beaches north of Mazatlan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I've never stayed up there because I don't have a car. And up there, you pretty much need a car mm-hmm. to, you know, so to live up in the up north. But a lot of there are a lot of um, really nice condominium complexes as you go north of the marina. Is it easy to get around town without a car? Oh, it's very well. That now there's Uber. So right. yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if you go north of the marina, it's not. Prob- well, no, with Uber, maybe it would be. There's only one bus that goes north of, of the marina. And then that's why I don't do it. But between, if, as long as you stay at the marina and north, it's easy to live without a car. Mm-hmm. I took cabs, and then there's one bus that goes up and down the Malacan, and that's super. But with Uber, that changed everything. I mean, now mm-hmm. it's, well, I, I don't have a car in Denver either, mm-hmm. uh, but I live downtown. Mm-hmm. And between Uber and Lyft, I don't really need a car. And, right. and a lot of people don't have cars nowadays in downtown Denver. Uber's right. gotten to be so popular. Mm-hmm. And so I use Uber in Mexico and um, and I love it just as much as I love it here in, 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 in Denver. Um, the interesting difference though is there you can actually just give them cash. You don't have to even give them a credit card. Whereas in, uh, in the States you have to use a credit card. Uh, in 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 Mazatlan, you, they accept cash too. Mm-hmm. Good, so, great. So so that's worked out really really well. Uh, they just began. Uber just moved into Mazatlan. I don't know, maybe six months ago, mm-hmm. and uh, that's been a godsend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that makes it ever so much easier. And I'm assuming there's a good local bus system also. Yeah, yeah. I've never. I I stay within kind of up and down the Malacan, but the bus system is good. Yeah, the public transportation is very good. Most expats don't really need much more than the the bus that goes up and down the Malacan. You really, most people don't need much more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, tell tell me when you, when you arrived in uh, in Mazatlan uh, in 2014, uh, did you experience any culture shock? I mean, 
did you feel kind of disoriented or did, did you feel pretty comfortable? Oh, when you got no, there? no. I was for that. That's why kind of why I had a housemate for the first my first I call it my tour. My first tour is to kind of get acclimated. Um, no, I was very there was a lot of uh, uh, unbalance. Um, I was nervous, you know, about uh, money exchange. Um, you know, being able to make money exchange, knowing what things should cost is, is very um, anxiety wrought, you know, because you, you never know if they're overcharging you or sometimes they're not and you think they might be and you get very suspicious. And uh, what, what prompted you to write your book on uh, 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 Spanish? Well, because Spanish has really, a lot of people think that they can't learn Spanish after 50. And I picked it back up after 55. How oh, interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. So tell us what's the name of your book. It's called The Interactive Guide to Learning Spanish Free Online. And who's it for? Um, it's for people over 50 who want to learn Spanish and are thinking, especially for people, there's a lot of references about about how you use your Spanish and practice your Spanish in, in Mexico or as an ex expat. So it is geared for adults and adults who are thinking about either traveling a lot in Mexico or, or living there. Let me ask you this. Um, if you're going to give some advice to someone thinking about moving to Mexico, what would you tell, uh, what would you tell them? Well, I would tell them to get started now in the language. You'll see other people saying the same thing, mm -hmm. other expats saying the same thing is it, it you know is to is to start now you mm -hmm. know if you think right. you're moving in a couple years now's the time to to, to start because right. it will make your life a heck of a lot easier and none of us are getting younger and, and would you recommend that people move around when they come down and live in different areas of the city well it, you know it worked for me because I think what happens is you fall in love with the place and you think I never want to leave here that happened to me. The first place I lived, I thought, this is wonderful. I'll just stay here. But every place I move, I like better than the last place. And the housing market isn't that tight, right? I mean, there are plenty of places to uh, to rent and, and purchase. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, okay. there, there are. It, it is easy to find houses there okay. uh, and places to live there. Yes, great. definitely. It was nice talking to you. Nice I'll talking to you. When you go back. Thanks, Gary. Have Talk a great day. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. No!